Hi, and welcome to this quest on sorting in Python. In this video, we'll talk about the two main ways of sorting in Python, and also how to pass in our own functions into the sorting functions to make them even better. This video is a part of a series on higher order functions, so check out the description for a full course on this on Skillshare. So let us begin nice and easy by showing you the basic ways of sorting in Python. So here I have a list of numbers, and I want to sort them. Then there are two options. First thing we can do is sort them into a new list. So here let's write sorted lists, and I, then I just use the built-in function sorted and pass in my list of numbers. So if I print out now the sorted list, I'll get numbers in sorted order. Note here that this gives me a new list, which is not the same as the original. So I still have access to the original one, and this has not been changed. So only the sorted list has been sorted. There is also a way of sorting in place in Python. What you do then is to call the method dot sort on any list. So then I take my list of nums, and I call the method sort like this. Now my original list of numbers have been sorted, so I can try and print this out. And you can see that it has become sorted. A very common mistake for beginners is to think that, oh, this sort things, so then I should make some kind of sorted list and assign it to this. But this thing here actually returns none, so this is not possible. The dot sort method sorts in place, so you should not assign this to a new list. Rather, you should just write list of nums dot sort, and now the original one has been sorted. Which one of these you use depends on the context. If you want to modify the original list, then you would sort in place. If you want a new sorted list while keeping the original one, you would use this approach. I would say that in most occurrences you would use this approach, so that you don't overwrite the original information you have. Okay, so so far so good. Is there really anything more to say about sorting? And the answer is yes. So let's go down to a new cell, and I want to talk about passing in functions into sorted. So let's say that I have a list of purchase orders, maybe coming from an online store. Let me just paste this in here, and they're all on this form here. And let's say that I want to sort these orders. So with what we know, I'll just write, okay, let's call this basic sorting, and let me here use the sorted function and pass in list of orders. And look at this and say, yeah, this is technically sorted because what's happening here is that it compares these as strings. So if you compare, let's say, the two first numbers, both have the hashtags, so they're equal, both have the ones, so they're equal, but seven comes before nine, so this is regarded as a smaller string. But if you intuitively gave someone this here and asked them to sort it, it would not probably look like this. Probably you would want this to be first, this to be second, this to be third, this to be fourth, and this to be fifth. This is not what's happening here, so this is probably not very useful in this context. So, what can we do to fix this? We can pass in functions into the sorted method to make custom sorting. So let's make a new list called sorted by length. And I'll use the sorted function and pass in my list of orders. But I want to change the way things are being sorted. So I can, in this function, pass in something called a key. And this key should be a function indicating how the sorting takes place. So let's first of all just try with a length function. And let me just print out the result. And also let me write sorted by length. Now we have this. It kind of looks a bit better in the sense that the seven here got in front, but here both of these strings here have length three, so they don't really occur in the correct order. I think we would all of us say that 90 should be before 53 here in an intuitive approach, but it's at least somewhat better than this. Let's backtrack a bit and talk about what's happened. So in the sorted function, you can pass in an optional argument called a key, and I pass in the length function. What will happen is that then the length function is evaluated on each thing in the list. So length of this is three, this is two, this is five, and so on. And then they're sorted according to that. So that's why the smallest one are here, and the biggest one is here. But it's still not very satisfactory, because this is not what I wanted. I wanted 19 before 53. And this is not sufficient, because this just gives out a length. So the answer is pretty clear. I simply have to make my own function. 
Let's call it order sorting. It should take in one string. So let's try to think what I want to compare. I don't really care about this hashtag at all. I don't want to remove it, but I don't care about it when it comes to sorting. What I care about is the value of these numbers, namely the size of them. This number seven is smaller than 19, 19 is smaller than 53, and so on. So what I want to return is each of these strings, and but I don't care about the hashtag, so I'll slice it away. So this here makes sure that I take everything after the first character and only considers this thing, but I'm still working with strings and I want to compare numbers. So just convert this into an integer. And this is it. This function here takes in the hashtag 53 as a string and just returns 53 as a number. And now I can make my sorted, let's call it sorted by size. So far, everything is the same, but here in the key, I'll pass in my own function. Run it, it seemed to be working. So let's print out sorted by size. Here we have 7, 19, 53, and so on. Everything is in the correct order. So in the context of the higher order functions, we're passing one function, the order sorting, into another function, the sorted function. And this is really, really useful. A lot of times you have data you want to sort, but you don't have it in precisely the format you want, so you need to make a short function specifying how you want it to be sorted. Before we end, I want to make a final example and this is regarding Pokemon. So here I have a list of Pokemons, and it's notice that this is a list of dictionaries. So I have a list, and each item in the list is a dictionary. And each of these dictionaries has a name, which is, in this case, a Squirtle, a Bulbasaur, or a Charmander. They have a Pokedex index, which is a number, and they have a type. So what do you think happens if I call sorted on list of Pokemon? The fact is that this will not only be a problem, in terms of getting the wrong order, I will actually, if I try to do this, get a type error here. Hope you can read this, but it says that comparison is not supported between instances of dictionary and dictionary. Essentially, what this sorted tries to do is to take the items of the list, for instance, this one and this one, and compare them. But in general, there's no obvious way to compare two dictionaries saying that one is bigger than the other. However, if you take a look at this dictionary here, I think we can all get an intuitive sense of what I want to do. I want to order them by the only thing that makes sense, namely the Pokedex index. So I want Bulbasaur first, and then Charmander, and then Squirtle. So how do I do this? I need to pass in a function as a key argument here, but there is no pre-made function for this. So I simply have to make my own function to do this. Let's call it sorted by Pokedex. This should take in one Pokemon. What should it return? It should return the thing I want to compare between them. So that is the Pokemon's Pokedex. Like this. And this is all there is to it. So let's just pass this to sorted by Pokedex and run it. So Jupyter Notebook automatically prints this for me. So here I have Bulbasaur first, and then Charmander, and then Squirtle. So this is in the correct order. A final thing you should know about the sorted method is that if you want to do it in reverse order, namely having seven first, then fourth, and then one, there is a short way of doing this, and this is just by passing in a reverse argument. So this is by default set to false, but if I set the reverse to true, then I get the opposite order. You can of course do this by a function as well, but this is just a very convenient way of doing it. So I hope you can see that passing our own functions into other functions, this philosophy of higher order functions, can be really, really useful for getting what we want. This takes these kind of basic sort of functions, which works in some cases, in others not, to be working all the time, as long as we can specify what we really need. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.